Good morning everybody and welcome to our online service from St James and St Anne's Bermondsey. It's great to have you with us. We begin with a hymn of praise, all creatures of our God and King. Bless and worship him in heart. 
We come now to the confession. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having confessed our sins and having received the assurance of God's forgiveness, let us declare his praise together. Please join in with the words in bold. Sing to the Lord all the world, worship the Lord with joy, come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people, we are his flock. Enter the temple gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him. The Lord is good, his love is eternal and his faithfulness lasts forever. Well, in a few moments our Bible reading and Jacob will bring us a message from God's word. But first we sing together again, as the deer pants for the water, so my heart longs after you.
Today's Bible reading is Hebrews chapter 11, verses 30 to 40. It was faith that made the walls of Jericho fall down after the Israelites had marched around them for seven days. It was faith that kept the prostitute Rahab from being killed with those who disobeyed God, for she gave the Israelite spies a friendly welcome. Should I go on? There isn't enough time for me to speak of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel and the prophets. Through faith they fought whole countries and won. They did what was right and received what God had promised. They shut the mouths of lions, put out fierce fires, escaped being killed by the sword. They were weak but became strong. They were mighty in battle and defeated the armies of foreigners. Through faith women received their dead relatives raised back to life. Others, refusing to accept freedom, died under torture in order to be raised to a better life. Some were mocked and whipped, and others were put in chains and taken off to prison. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were killed by the sword. They went around clothed in skins of sheep or goats, poor, persecuted and mistreated. The world was not good enough for them. They wandered like refugees in the deserts and hills, living in caves and holes in the ground. What a record all of these have won by their faith. Yet they did not receive what God had promised, because God had decided on an even better plan for us. His purpose was that only in company with us would they be made perfect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello there, everybody. Before we begin, let's pray. Heavenly Father, please speak to us now by your Holy Spirit that we might hear your voice in our hearts, receive what you say, and live it out. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I was on the phone the other day, and I was put in a queue, and it said, you are 15th in the queue. About every 30 seconds, you are 15th in the queue. Well, I decided I'd try and get on with doing some emails. Hopefully speakerphone won't be too distracting. You are 14th in the queue. Oh, quite exciting, although still a long way to go. I had a check. Between 15th place and 14th place was about five minutes. So with 14 places to go, I did a quick bit of maths and worked out I'd be on the phone a very long time. So I thought I'd go and get some lunch. So I went downstairs, had my lunch, came back upstairs. You are 12th in the queue. <sighs> Well, to cut a long story short, um, I made it to fifth, which isn't bad. Uh, I think I felt like probably what a runner feels like if uh, they didn't win the race, but they put in a respectable performance. You know, fifth isn't bad, because uh, what happened is uh, I got to fifth, uh, and I was in fifth place for about 20 minutes, uh, by which point I just lost all confidence that I was ever actually going to end up speaking to somebody. I'd been on the phone so long, so... I hung up. Well done. Good effort. Better luck next time. wonder if you've ever had a phone call like that. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a, a real dogged attitude, real strength of mind uh, to just persevere, to just keep on going. Especially when in your mind you keep thinking, would it be better to just give up? But what about when being a Christian feels like being in that queue on the phone. You're persevering, you're persevering in your Christian faith, but it's just a long wait. You see, God has made us an amazing promise. He's promised us that we will one day enter into the most holy place of his heavenly presence. But we're not there yet. We're still on the road, we're still making that journey. We're waiting, we're waiting for what has been promised. And sometimes quietly and sometimes loudly, that question pops up in our head. Would it be better to just stop? That can be especially true when you feel the cost of being a Christian. The cost might be rejection by your husband or wife or constant pressure at work to support things that you don't agree with. Or following God's standards for relationships, that might mean the cost of staying single. 
Being generous with your money might mean the cost of going without certain things that all your friends enjoy. Or facing constant illness might make you feel like God is never going to pull through for you. When that's your experience, what will keep you going? Well, the writer of Hebrews points to all the faithful women and men of the Old Testament who can inspire and encourage us by their example. And there are two reasons that we can be encouraged by them. Uh, firstly, we can look back and watch how they just keep on going through thick and thin. They're an inspiration. Secondly, when we look back, we see that they kept going even though their hope was much less certain than ours. We have better hope. But first, uh, let's watch them keep going through thick and thin. In today's reading, it, it says, Others, refusing to accept freedom, died under torture in order to be raised to a better life. Some were mocked and whipped, and others were put in chains and taken off to prison. They were stoned. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went around clothed in skins of sheep or goats, poor, persecuted and mistreated. The world was not good enough for them. They wandered like refugees in the deserts and hills, living in caves and holes in the ground. What a record all of these have won by their faith. These men and women are heroes of faith, aren't they? Just look what trusting God cost them. But they kept going. They trusted God so much they never gave in or turned back. What an example for us. I mean, do you ever ask, what's God done for me? Do you ever wonder, when is God going to pull through for me? Do you ever think, have all these years of faithful obedience been a mistake? Sometimes I catch myself uh, wondering how much money I'd have in the bank if I'd got a job in the city instead of working for the church. But the writer of Hebrews says, come on, look back at what Abraham and Noah and the prophets endured. Look what they went through and be inspired. In spite of everything, they kept on trusting God that one day he would deliver on his promise. And so they did not give up, no matter the cost. And that's the first encouragement to us, to see them keep going through thick and thin, and to be inspired. And here's the second encouragement. They kept going, even though their hope was much less certain than ours. Verse 39 says, What a record! All of these have won by their faith. But, then it continues, Yet they did not receive what God had promised. They lived their whole life for God. And as they reached the end of their lives, it, it was obvious that after all these years, nothing had changed. They were looking for something greater than the promised land, greater than a human kingdom. But life was the same as it had always been. Yes, there had been victories along the way. Uh, yes, God had kept some of his smaller promises. They'd, they'd had some successes. But on balance things remained just the same as always. And yet, nevertheless, they didn't, as it were, hang up the phone. They had reasons to be disappointed, perhaps, but they kept the faith till the day they died. If they kept going without ever seeing God's promise materialise, shouldn't we keep going now that his promises have materialised? to a great extent. You see, the reason why they didn't receive what was promised is because the ultimate outcome of God's promise is that we will enter into his very presence in heaven. But for that to be possible, we each need to be made perfect. We need to be fully qualified. And you can't qualify yourself. 
The message of Hebrews is that only a perfect sacrifice made by an eternal high priest can make us perfect. In other words, only Jesus can qualify us. And so even after they died, they were still waiting. Waiting for the day when Jesus would die for them and us to atone for our sins and make us perfect. Verse 40 says, they did not receive what God had promised because God had decided on an even better plan for us. His purpose was that only in company with us would they be made perfect. God's better plan, that's Jesus. Which is why it was only in company with us that they were made perfect. They weren't yet perfect because they lived before Jesus. Everything that had to happen for God to keep his promise was all in the future. They had no evidence that it would ever happen. All they had to go on was God's word. But for us, the promise has come true. Jesus has already come. He has atoned for our sins. He's perfected us. He's qualified us to enter into the very presence of God in heaven. And the proof is that he's already there now representing us because he sacrificed himself for us we have the exact same level of security clearance as Jesus where he is now is where we will be all we have to do for the moment is keep going the Old Testament believers they never knew Jesus but they kept going on the basis of God's promise we do know Jesus and we know that the promise because of Jesus, has now become a reality. So our hope is much more certain. We're living in a time they could only dream of. If they could keep going without knowing Jesus, how much more can we keep going when we look up and see him at God's right hand? So here's the main thing. Where sometimes the wait to be with Jesus it seems unending. But don't hang up the phone. Don't give up. Keep going. The believers of old, they kept going through thick and thin, and we have far more reason for confidence than them. We already see Jesus seated at God's right hand. Already when Christians die, they are entering into the presence of God. So don't give up. If you are living for Jesus, you are on the right path. And our God is always faithful. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you that your promise has come true, that Jesus has made a way for us into your presence. He's qualified us. And so we know where trusting in you leads. We know that it is a reality. So please help us to look to Jesus and keep going, whatever the cost. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to pray.
come now to a time of prayer. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you and praise you for your great love for us and that you want the best for us in all things. We thank you that you sent Jesus to be our Saviour and help us, Lord, to tell others the good news of the Gospel. Lead us and guide us, Lord, as we come out of lockdown and help us to be continuing shining lights into our community. Show us, Lord, the things that we should be doing to be most effective in how we serve you here in Bermondsey and in other places. We pray for schools returning tomorrow to in-person teaching. Keep the children and the staff safe as they gather together again after such a long time. We pray for the safety of parents and carers as they drop off and pick up their children. We pray also for those that are fearful of going out again after such a long and enforced lockdown. We pray, Lord, for those in the caring profession who have worked tirelessly during the pandemic. Lord, protect them as they go about their work. Strengthen them, Lord, with resilience to be able to face all that they have to. Help them, Lord, to be able to get the required amount of rest and recuperation that they need before continuing their arduous work in our hospitals and in our GP surgeries, in our community, and particularly at those uh, vaccination centres where people are working so hard. We pray, Lord, for the sick and bereaved. We ask that you will bring healing and restoration for those that are suffering from COVID and all kinds of other illnesses. For those suffering from emotional illness, we pray, Lord, that you will preserve their mental health and strengthen them. We call to mind those known personally to us from our own fellowship and community and raise them to you now in a short time of silence, just saying their names in the quietness of our hearts. And we pray, Lord, for those who have lost someone close to them, be that recently or some time ago. Comfort them and uphold them as they mourn their passing. We pray for those in authority over us, for the Queen and her family, particularly for Prince Philip as he recovers in hospital from his heart surgery. We pray for our Prime Minister and the Cabinet as they make all the difficult decisions about the roadmap out of Covid and the rebuilding of our economy. We pray, Lord, for our MP, Neil Coyle, and for all our local councillors. We thank you for all that they do and ask that you will grant them wisdom and understanding and that you will guide them in all matters that they're involved in. We pray for our wider world. We pray for peace in conflicts wherever they may be, for love and fairness to overrule selfishness and greed. We pray, Lord, for Christians that are being persecuted for their faith. Give them strength, Lord, strength to hold on, and to be able to continue to worship you without fear. We pray for people everywhere, Lord, to turn to you as Lord and Saviour. Also, Father, we pray for our environment, for this beautiful world that you've given us. Help us to care for it and to look after it, Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, as our Saviour taught us, we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The splendour of the King Clothed in majesty But all 
the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great. And now, a final prayer of blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today for our online service. Just a reminder that we are holding in-person services at St Anne's, 9.30 a.m. on Sundays and at St James's at 11 a.m. You're very welcome to come to those services, but if you're unable to, for whatever reason, we are, at least for the moment, continuing with our online service. So do join us again on the YouTube channel next week, if not in person. Whatever it is you're doing over the week, do stay safe and have a great week. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. I love the Lord, he heard my voice, he heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I call upon his name. The cords of death entangle me The anguish of the grave When sorrow overcame my soul I cried, oh Lord, please save You deliver
How can I? 